Binge drinking. Defined as the consumption of five or more drinks in a row by men or four or more drinks in a row by women at least once in the previous two weeks. A recent national survey reveals that 70% of college students reported binge drinking and every year anywhere between 14 and 1,700 college students die from alcohol-related incidents. Ryder University, a small campus in Lawrenceville, New Jersey, was hit hard when tragedy struck home in March of 2007. What results in a university when an alcohol-related death of a student hits home? How did the students react? What were the reactions of the administration? What changed? We took a look. Death case. Ryder University freshman Gary Deverselli lay unconscious. Gary Deverselli was taken off life support this morning. Two school officials and three fraternity members have been charged. Ryder University's dean of students and the director of Greek life are among the five people charged with it. On March 30th, 2007, Gary Deverselli died from excessive consumption of alcohol in the Phi Kappa Tau fraternity house. The incident resulted in three students and two administrators being charged with aggravated hazing. Consequently, Ryder University has dissolved the Phi Kappa Tau chapter on campus. He was just such a good person and he doesn't deserve to be where he is right now and it's, it's not fair. He was devastating for us all. Uh, the reaction that we had and the resolve that we had is what can we do to prevent this from happening again? And that's, that resolve is the thing that brought us to examining uh, ourselves through the alcohol task force. Ryder University's president, Mordecai Rizansky, immediately ordered the forming of a presidential task force in order to examine Ryder's regulations on alcohol and drug abuse. The presidential task force was, quote, charged with the responsibility to assess the effectiveness of Ryder's alcohol policies, enforcement activities, and education and outreach programs as they pertain to all aspects of student life in the context of national best practices. The major emphasis for the task force was to reduce the incidence of abusive drinking. The task force was really one about substance abuse. And, and part of that is to also help us share the responsibility with students. I think it's unfair to put all the responsibility on students to do that. That issue of shared responsibility uh, is why we've added house directors in there. That issue of shared responsibility is why we are working with the pub to be able to share the responsibility of the parties and things that way um, and working with licensed environments. Uh, the issue of shared responsibility is why we're working with the RAs and the RDs and why we have a, a substance abuse corner. So it's a shared responsibility, not just, it's, it, I think it's irresponsible for us to just abandon mm -hmm. the students to make totally their own decisions. Despite Ryder's immediate response, tragedy struck again when Justin Warfield died from alcohol and heroin overdose on October 18th at an off-campus house at Ryder's sister school, Westminster Choir College. Tonight there is an arrest and the death of a student from a quiet New Jersey university. Prosecutors say the 18-year-old freshman had drugs and alcohol in his system. At first I was more surprised than I am now because at first I heard it was only alcohol related and then I heard it was drug related. Not saying that that makes it okay because it was a different message to not do alcohol than drugs. I don't know, it's kind of weird because it's just been happening a lot with a lot of kids so I don't know why, like you don't hear it from any other college and it's just Ryder all over the news. So something's going wrong. Right when that happened, the um, orientation people and other counselors were like, what did we do wrong? Because they, had, they assumed at first that there was going to be a combination of alcohol and drugs. I don't think I ever have a different reaction when a student dies. Um, I think uh, whether it's natural causes, mm -hmm. car accidents, or you know events like these, uh, my reaction to a student death is mm -hmm. is always the same. It's like my gosh, yeah. you know what what is happening, and how can we 
how can we help the family? How do we yeah. deal with uh, a death of somebody so young and some, mm -hmm. so early in their life? So that, that reaction, it's always a shock because yeah. you just don't expect 18 to 22 year olds to die. I don't think you'll find another task force mm -hmm. uh, on the basis of Justin because when you look at that, the task force, the things the task force are doing, I think encompasses the kinds of things that we would do uh, in the, the case of Justin as well. Mm -hmm. Currently, 16 out of 19 recommendations have been completed. A lot of them have already been followed through. I mean, I'm sitting here, so that's part of it. They've enhanced the alcohol policy. We designed the policy differently, and as I mentioned, we increase sanctions across the board. So the fines are increased, we do have mandatory alcohol education or, or outreach, um, and we have now mandatory parental notification for all violations. They're allowing students to have alcohol in their room if they're under 21, even if in the presence of under 21 yeah. old people. A lot of those things, we, ha we have the Good Samaritan policy. We added a Good Samaritan component, which um, basically encourages students to make that phone call when they feel that somebody is medically compromised because of excessive alcohol consumption. They've opened up the pub to under 21 year olds so that we create a lighter social atmosphere. Different um, things have happened. Uh, I, I would say probably the, the two biggest ones is uh, we this year have, we're experimenting with the idea of um, 18 to get into the pub and uh, 21 to drink. Uh, we right now have two nights a week uh, that we're doing that. Uh, our Monday night, what traditionally we were open Mondays and Thursdays and one Friday a month. Uh, now we're open Mondays, Thursdays, and Fridays. The other great thing I think we've done, as we take a look at the change in the social event policy for the university and some change in the alcohol policy in the university, and primarily taking a look at the idea that uh, parties cannot take place as residential units. We're working with a whole other task force, continuing task force on educating the communities. Freshmen had several things. It, it was a lot more in-depth information given to them at orientation, but they were also required to complete an alcohol EDU program. Out of the 16 recommendations that have been completed, six of them were part of the Greek section of the task force. The major emphasis for the task force was to reduce the incidence of abusive drinking. They do seem a little extreme. They're too strict. I mean, they can have parties, but you don't, you don't need alcohol to have fun at a party. Um, I think that they're being too strict, and it's, it's kind of like the drinking age being 21. In other countries, it's 18, and you don't see the same problems in other countries that we have here in America. Making kids unable to drink is just going to make them want to do it more and have to be more sneaky about it. So I think in the end, Ryder is just bringing on more problems. This was another way of pointing out that it's a two-way street. It's a collaborative effort that just as we have residence halls as part of our facilities master plan in terms of addressing deferred maintenance, we need to do that as well with the Greek houses. For a couple of reasons, again, to recognize our role in supporting your success, but also to recognize that those houses are a part of our community just as the residence halls are. Hope, hopefully so that, that each of the chapters will take greater pride in their living space um, and also, when, when need be, to provide some flexibility. When the, f the first time I met with a Greek house, mm -hmm. it was one of the um, house managers, mm -hmm. and he gave me a tour. And when I walked into their lounge area, the first thing I thought is, why wouldn't you throw a wild party in here because there's nothing worthwhile keeping. Yeah. You know, it, It's shown that if you have something that you appreciate, that you are proud of, you're going to take better care of it. Yeah. So would it, would it be beneficial that if people had a nicer place to hang out and didn't want to get it ruined by having beer spilled all over the place? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. You know, th I mean, that, that, and you mentioned that recommendation in there. I mean, it's, it's just, you know, that just makes so much sense to me. Some of the issues that we've had in the Greek community is not all chapters have been able to fill their houses, and sometimes we've had to use to move 
chapters around or chapters have had to share a house. That's hard to do when some of these houses are not in such great shape. So it does afford us greater flexibility for doing that. Hopefully we'll help you in, in building up your memberships. Um, it will help you understand too the role that we play in supporting your success um, and reminding all of us that those Greek houses are just as much a part of our facilities master plan as our residence halls or any of our academic buildings. So that was the thinking with that. I don't believe there's anybody whether it's a fraternity guy or, or administrator, that would ever be willing to say that in those settings there wasn't abusive drinking or underage drinking that was going on. Mm -hmm. And what we're trying to do in, in this shared regulation is to take the responsibility off of the students. I think it's a lot of responsibility for uh, a fraternity, for example, to have to regulate underage drinking and to mm -hmm. regulate the, their fraternity brothers and how they're doing it. The task force, as I mentioned, was charged with looking at our policies, enforcement activities, education outreach, but it was also charged to look at the Greek community and to see um, what, what areas of improvement there are in that area. The bottom line is that unfortunately Gary died in a Greek house. Um, as part of an event associated with that chapter. And that's not something that we can forget. Given that we had already concerns um, about some of the things going on in the Greek chapters, um, as I said, this was an opportunity to address those. You're right, not all of the recommendations have to do with alcohol, but we felt that we needed to do a better job together of strengthening the Greek community. Some of the concerns that faculty have raised, that perhaps other staff have raised, really came to the forefront um, when, when that unfortunate incident occurred. And we felt it was time now to address this in the community. Not pointing a finger just at the Greek community saying, you guys have to do better but to say, we need to work together to get the focus back onto more of what even the website, what the, the Office of Greek Life talks about, what you all talk about in your chapters as being important components of, of why you're in the chapter that you are, and get the focus back on that. Um, and this was an opportunity to do that. So uh, you're right, it doesn't all focus on alcohol. Alcohol-related incidents in the Greek housing took over the news both on and off campus. New at 6 tonight, there is more trouble at Ryder University in New Jersey. Earlier this year, a student died after a drinking bringe at a frat house there. And now, a fight at another frat house sends a young man to the hospital. The guys at on September 29th, the Zeta Beta Tau fraternity fell short of the heightened Greek expectations. John Goodleaf was involved in a fight in the fraternity basement, leading to Andrew Endicott, a guest of a Ryder student, being sent to the hospital and Goodleaf being charged with assault and the possession of marijuana. This incident led to an investigation of the fraternity and immediate suspension of all organization affairs within Zeta Beta Ta. Ultimately, on November 19th, the Zeta Beta Tau fraternity was closed and their charter was suspended until 2011. The alcohol policy is intended to support students, our students' success and to be supportive of students, not to be punitive. If you look at the regulations in the residence halls, yeah. they've actually gotten looser. The only thing that's really changed has been the parties in the Greek houses. Yeah. We don't want to put people on pins and needles. We want them to, you know, have their fun yeah. and do the things they need, you know, they want to do and they can do. Yeah. I, I can, I, the whole purpose of part of the regulations is to prevent abusive drinking. If you look at the alcohol policy, there's two tiers. Tier one is for, you know, is, is for non-abusive drinking. Tier yeah. two is for the abusive drinking. So we're taking a much stronger stand yeah. on the abusive drinking. Yeah. I really didn't recognize how you guys were looking at things in more of a punitive way, where I, I, I should have thought of that, but I didn't. Remember the alcohol task force was on substance abuse and personal responsibility. Mm -hmm. So it comes down to personal responsibility. Um, 
does it force somebody to go off campus to drink? I don't think it's the policy that does that. Mm -hmm. I'm under no illusions that, that we've stopped all underage drinking on this yeah. campus. Um, I can't imagine no, anybody no. believes we've stopped all underage drinking on yeah. campus. It's too early for me to say has it been a success or not. I think that there are people who came here with one expectation and that's changed. Mm -hmm. Um, they're going to be disgruntled. Mm -hmm. I have read the entire document. We follow through with everything that all the recommendations. I think it has a, a has the potential to help a lot. I think there's been growing pains this semester. Mm -hmm. um, we're all getting used to it. And we felt that abuse of alcohol consumption detracts from that success, from your development, um, from your education. So the primary focus was of concern addressing concerns we had about our students health and safety and welfare. Are we going to assess it? Yeah, we're going to assess it at the end of this semester. We're going to assess, assess it at the end of the year. And do we have to, do I expect we'll make, you know, we'll tweak the policy here and there? I certainly expect that we'll do that. But overall I think it's been successful. I think we've raised a lot of awareness. I know that we're doing everything we can be to be honest with you. Uh, we may not agree on everything. Yeah. The best I can do, the best that Debbie can do, the best that any of us can do is keep that lines of channel of communication open. Mm -hmm. I think we've attempted to do that. Mm -hmm.